Okay, as I said in the first video, uh, the textbook gives you sort of the impression that the one and only use of matrices is, is these functions, uh, as representing functions, and, and like I said, that's not the case. So I wanted to give you a couple more examples of how matrices are extremely useful and versatile objects. So let's first start with looking at the system of equations here. We have x plus y minus z equals 0, 2x minus y plus 3z equals 7, and y plus z equals 3. Now, if I wanted to solve this equation, uh, it's not so hard. I'm sure you have experience with this. I already have here um, two, I'm going to use the elimination technique. I already have here one equation which has two variables only, so perhaps in these first two equations I can try and get rid of x. So maybe I'll take the first one here and I'll multiply it by 2. That's going to give me 2x plus 2y minus 2z is equal to 0. And then from this equation, we know that 2x minus y plus 3z is equal to 7. So subtract the second equation from the first equation. Uh, so 2x minus 2x is 0. 2y minus negative y is 3y. Uh, negative 2z uh, minus 3z is minus 5z. And then 0 minus 7 is negative 7. And then we also had this y plus z is equal to 3. I'm going to get rid of uh, z's in this equation, so I'm going to take this one and I'm going to multiply it by 5. I get 5y plus 5z is equal to 15, and now I'm going to bring this equation down here, and we're just going to add these two equations, and we're going to get that 8y is equal to 8, which means that y is equal to 1. So once we know y is equal to 1, then we know that y plus z equals 3, so that means that 1 plus z is equal to 3, or that z is equal to 2. And then once we know that, we know that x plus y minus z equals 0. So we know that x plus 1 minus 2 equals 0, which means that uh, x equals 1. So if I summarize my results here, I get that x equals 1, y equals 1, and z equals 2. Uh, yeah, all right. So that's sort of the uh, Algebra 2 method of solving this equation, uh, but as systems get more and more complicated, that particular method becomes less and less uh, practical. So, you know, once you start wanting to involve computers, you want to be a little bit more methodical, a little bit more systematic about it. And one way we can do that is we can say, really, that solution method only depended on the coefficients. All that depended upon was those coefficients and a little bit on these numbers over here. Okay, so what if we just looked at those coefficients? So one way to represent this system is 1, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 3, and then 0, 1, 1. This is called the coefficient matrix. And the coefficient matrix uh, is just literally that. It's just the coefficients of the, the, uh, of the variables. Now notice they have to be written in order, and that's why I had to, I had to make sure that even though there was no x here, I, I started with a 0 because I can't uh, miss any variables. Okay, so if you remember your rules of matrix multiplication from the, from the textbook, if I took this and I multiplied it by the vector x, y, z, I would get exactly the left side of this system back. I would get 1x plus 1y minus z, x plus y minus z. I would get 2x uh, minus y plus 3z, 2x minus y plus 3z. So I can represent the left side of this equation by a simple matrix multiplication. If we call this, say, m, and this, perhaps, say, as the column vector, so I might call it x, I might call this mx. What does it equal? Well, it just equals another column vector, and the other column vector is just 0, 7, 3. And uh, maybe we call that y, you can call it whatever you like. But we can represent this system as some matrix M times uh, the, variable ma the variable vector X, and then that's going to equal the answers, or the, the right side, uh, which is the vector Y. Now, we can actually solve this by a method called row reduction, but that's not what I wanted to go through in this, in this video. But if you're interested, there's some good Khan Academy, video, Khan Academy videos on solving systems by... Uh, by doing row reduction. That's, again, not part of this course, however. Okay, so let's take one more example, and this is sort of 
that previous example, this example of systems of equations, is sort of a, a pretty standard example. You see it in a lot of algebra 2 courses. Uh, it's not necessarily the most flashy or the most exciting. It is definitely practical. It is used quite a bit, um, but it's, it's, I have to be honest, it's sort of boring. So let's go on to a, a, a more exciting example. Okay, so the next uh, example is are called adjacency matrices. And, and they are taken from graph theory. So let's first just let's create a graph here. So a graph um, in its, I guess, the simplest form, we just have a bunch of, of nodes. And uh, I can think of like a, more of like a map than a, than a graph here. Let's say I have these, these four things. And they are called, uh, they're called vertices. So let's label them. Let's call this one V1, this one V2, this one V3, and this one V4. And perhaps there are some, some ways to get around here. So there's a road that connects V1 to V2. And maybe there's a road that connects V1 to V3. But perhaps there's not a road that connects V1 to V4. And maybe there's a road, uh, another road from uh, V2 back to V1, and then maybe there's a road from V2 to V3, and then there is a road from V1 to V2 to V4. Uh, V3, perhaps for V3, V3 might become interesting. It might have a, a, a loop, like a beltway that can sort of go around and come back to itself. And then let's say that uh, V3 also has a, a path to itself. Now, what if I wanted to say, how many ways are there to get from, say, V1 uh, to V4? Since they're not directly connected, uh, how many ways could, well, I could go up to V2, and then I could go down. Or maybe I could go over through V3, or I could go down, that's two. Maybe I could go this way, or I could go down. Maybe I could go over here, and then over here, and then over here. Or I could go back and forth like this. There's all sorts of different ways. Uh, and you know, some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. So it might be interesting to try and count those ways. Well, matrices actually gives a really great tool to allow us to do that. So let's uh, let's have about this how we might represent it in a, in a table. We're going to make a little table here, and across the top I wrote v1, v2, v3, v4, and then down the side we're going to write the same thing: v1, v2, v3, v4, and then we're just going to make a little grid that goes along with that. Okay, so that what we're going to fill in in this grid is how many ways there are to get directly from, you know, the one, from whatever we have here to here. So how many ways are there to get from V1 to V1 in one path? Well, you can't. There's no way. Uh, how about from V1 to V2? Well, there actually turns out to be two ways. There's this way and there's this way. So there's two. So we're going to fill in a two right here. And then... Uh, if I'm going to want to know how about from V1 to V3, from V1 to V3, there's just this one path right there, that's one, and from V1 to V4, there are zero. Now, we can keep going from V2 to V1, we know that there are two. Uh, from V2 to V2, there aren't any ways to get back to itself in one path, and then uh, in one step. And then from V2 to V3, there's one, and from V2 to V4, there's one. Now, from V3, uh, from V3 to V1, there's one way. That's, uh, that's this way right here. And then from V3 uh, to V2, I've got my, just my one way. From V3 to V3, now this one is sort of unique. This one's the only one where I can't actually get to myself in one step. Uh, so that's why there's, there's a one right here. And then from V3 to V4, there's one, and then from V4 to V1, none, from V4 to V2, one, from V4 to V3, we've got uh, one, and from V4 to V4, we've got none. Okay, now here we have a, a table which lists all the ways. Now, take a look, a couple things about this table. First of all, you can see, actually, if I draw a line along the diagonal here, uh, they're all zeros, zero, zero, zero except for this one, and this one is the only one, <clears throat> V3 is the only one that has a path to itself, has a path uh, to itself. So unless there's a path to itself, this diagonal is going to be zeros. Uh, and then the other thing to notice is it's, it's symmetric. Uh, so we've got a 2 and a 2, we've got a, a 1, 0, 1, and we've got 0, 1, 1, 0, uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 
and then uh, yeah, it's it's a symmetric, and that's just because the paths from V two to V uh, three are the same as the paths from V three to V two, so it's got to be symmetric. Um, if now that's that is be, because of the type of graph I drew. If I were allowing the arrows, and let's say I said this road only goes this direction, in which case that would mean there's uh, one, two ways to get from V1 to V2, this way and this way, and only one way to get back, this way, because this one was one way, that would change the symmetry of this. But because I didn't put any of those arrows on here, we know it's like that. Okay, so what good does this matrix tell us? Well, it, it's actually kind of amazing. Uh, oh, what matrix are you talking about? You're talking about this one. Uh, I can make a matrix which would be 0, 2, 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 1, uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 1, 0. That matrix is called the adjacency matrix. Uh, this matrix knows it's square. It's got to be. Uh, and if it's a square matrix, that means that it's, you know, n by n. In this particular case, it's 4 by 4. And n by n matrix, you can actually multiply by itself as many times as you like. Uh, you can raise it different powers. And what happens is when you raise it to different powers, you figure out uh, how many path lengths there are. So let's Let's take a second and do that. So let's take a second to, to, to check that out and uh, see what's going on here. So first I'm going to switch to the program MATLAB. It's an awesome program. If you want to take the time to learn it and you know a little bit of programming, it can be really powerful. So it's very easy to define a matrix in MATLAB. I'm going to call my adjacency matrix A, very creative name. Uh, and the matrix was 0. The first row was 0, 2, 1, 0. The second row was 2, 0, 1, 1. The third row was 1, 1, 1, 1. And the last row was 0, 1, 1, 0. Might be a little hard to read in that format, but if I hit return, it'll print it out very nicely for us. So there you see the adjacency matrix. Okay, stored as A. Now, if I want to do A times A, that's A squared, uh, I can see there's my adjacency matrix. And maybe let's do it one more time. Let's do a times A times A, and see what A cubed is. Now, they start to get pretty big pretty quickly here. But uh, let's take a look at this. OK, so we had our original adjacency matrix, which I called A. And then if we took A and we cubed it, we got this. So we said that A cubed is equal to this. Now, what does this tell us? Let me draw my brackets around here. Uh, it tells us the number of paths of length three from any one matrix, or from any one vertex to another. So let's say I wanted to go, uh, this tells us that from V2 uh, to V3, there are 12 paths. Okay, now let's take a, a smaller one and uh, perhaps verify this. So let's say, uh, let's look at this. So V1 to V4, it says that there are four, four paths. So let's take a second to count those. So from V1 to V4, we've got paths of length three. So how can I get there in three? Well, I can go, I can go one, two, three. That's one. I can go one, two, three. That's two. And I'm going to get two more here. Hmm. Perhaps I can go one, two, three, that's three, and then my last one, my fourth one, is one, two, three. So that tells us there are, well, this matrix tells us there are four, and if we count, that is what we get. Now, if we count all of these, uh, it would tell us an equal. But simple matrix multiplication tells us that. Now, if you're interested in proving that, uh, I suggest you try, because it's kind of fun, and it's definitely doable. And if you get stuck and, and want some information on it, let me know. I'm happy to help you out. But it's not part of this course, so we're going to have to leave it as a cliffhanger. All right. Uh, I hope you saw now that there are some applications of matrices beyond just the simple definition of functions. And uh, good luck with the rest of the unit.